This is a Fox News alert. Fox News confirming Iran has freed an 81-year-old Iranian-American businessman it has held in prison since 2016, but it's only for four days because of his deteriorating health. Bakir Namazi has been, had been arrested as he arrived in Iran to visit his son, who is serving a 10-year sentence for, quote, collaborating with a foreign government. The U.S., has been in back-channel discussions with Iran to release the Namazis. Heather Nauert of the State Department tweeting, quote, we welcome the release of Bakr Namazi given his deteriorating health, but we note that his release is only temporary. We call for the immediate and full release of the Namazi family, including his son, Simek, as well as other Americans unjustly held by the Iranian government. Joining me now, Michael Hanlon, director of foreign policy research at the Brookings Institute. Uh, Michael, how big a deal is this for the Trump administration, and how does this position President Trump for his meetings with uh, U.N. Security of, uh, Council officials that's coming up on Tuesday? Uh, good afternoon. Well, it's not a big deal. You know, it's an 81-year-old guy who should not have been held in the first place and who's only going to be temporarily given this medical reprieve or break. Uh, this is the sort of thing that should be a no-brainer for the Iranian government. I'm surprised they're just letting him out for four days because you would have thought, as harmless as this uh, elderly man obviously is, right. they would have wanted to give the appearance of being humanitarian and reasonable because, as we know, President Trump is trying to persuade other countries to get tougher on Iran in one way or another. And the more that Iran can do to soften its image without having to give up anything meaningful, uh, you would think that would be the game they'd want to play. So uh, I'm disappointed that it's just for four days, and I don't consider it a big deal in any event. Mm -hmm. I understand your point there. So, Michael, how do U.S. and U.N. diplomats reconcile with Iran as long as you have the conflicting views of the Islamic Republic hardliners and those of Iran's President Hassan Rouhani, Rouhani pardon me, remaining as a major political barricade? Well, no doubt. And I think we all know that as much as one might hope for a long-term improvement in U.S.-Iran relations, starting with better behavior by the Iranian regime, that's not something we can expect in the short term or even the medium term. And so I think for President Trump, the dilemma is this. As we all know, he doesn't like the Iran nuclear deal. But most of his cabinet seems to think that now that we've got it, we're better off sticking with it than not having it. However, how do you push back against Iran in all the other domains of its aggressive behavior? from human rights at home and again with the prisoner issue that we're seeing today to its activities in Yemen and Iraq and Syria and beyond. Uh, we've got to have a regional strategy that pushes against Iran. And also then President Trump would like to have some of the limitations of the Iran nuclear deal become permanent because as you know, a lot of them start to expire right. in six or eight or 10 years. And so those are the two big areas where the Trump administration is trying to create this international sense of the need to put more pressure on, on Iran. I hope we don't pull out of the nuclear deal because I think it will be a situation where we are seen as the violator of an accord that on its own very narrow terms, Iran is essentially complying with. But they're not complying with decent norms of international behavior in other aspects of their Middle East policy. And that's where we've got to get tougher. Well, I'm going to follow up in a second, but let me tell you this first. According to reporting by Fox News' Jennifer Griffin, uh, there are more than a dozen other Americans held in North Korea, Turkey, Afghanistan, Syria, Mali, and Yemen, and Venezuela. And getting back to Iran, Michael, FBI agent Robert Bob Levinson has been held captive off the coast of Iran for almost 11 years. And, and I wonder, I don't, you don't seem to be too optimistic, but will today's turn of events lead to the release, possibly? of other American prisoners. I mean, Mr. Levinson's family has been talking about his poor health as well. Yeah, I, absolutely. And one would have to assume the answer is no, that we should not be optimistic because these prisoners have been held for so long on such flimsy pretexts uh, that the idea that somehow a four-day reprieve for an 81-year-old man is going to lead to any general softening of prisoner policy is pretty optimistic. So, no, I don't expect that. Frankly, I, I'm surprised at the Iranian regime. I would have thought even being, in many cases, the thugs that a lot of them are, they would have seen prisoner release as a way to soften their image and therefore improve their of not getting all this other international pressure the Trump administration is trying to apply. Uh, but apparently that's not something they're prepared to do at this juncture. If you could sum up for me in about 30 seconds, Michael, so what should President Trump and his uh, Security Council counterparts or, or uh, advisors, I should say, what do they say to Iran at this point? As you're pointing out, okay, yeah, you let 
you know, an 81 year old, very sick man out, that's really not a great gesture. So, how can the president get tough on Iran and make it stick? Well, it's got to be country by country and issue by issue. So, with 30 seconds, I'll just give you one example. Here we are in Iraq, having largely defeated the Islamic State. And I give a lot of credit to President Trump and to President Obama, and most of all to our men and women in uniform who worked with Iraqis to do that over the last two to three years. But now we have to help Iraq get stable so it's not as vulnerable to Iranian adventurism. And what that means is we need to encourage the government in Iraq to reach out across Sunni, Shia, Kurdish lines and do the kind of reconstruction construction program for their country that they really need in a way that everybody gets buy-in and everybody gets benefit. So we should stay engaged in Iraq. We should keep some troops there as trainers. We should keep giving some economic aid, which they desperately need, partly to get our own influence to a point where we can, you know, basically help this country be a little bit more cohesive so it's less vulnerable to Iran's games. Iran plays games where there's weakness and chaos and it can divide one person against another. So Iraq is at a juncture. We've got okay. to help the Iraqis get stronger. Got it. Michael Hanlon, thank you for your analysis. I have to leave it there. Thanks, Michael. My pleasure. Thank uh -huh. you.